So hello and welcome to another episode of Analog Insights. But wait a minute, where's the bookcase and all the stuff? Yeah, I moved and that's also the reason why I didn't publish so many videos lately. So let's restart in my new flat. So another hello and welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, I want to do a quick test of the Kodak Pro Image 100 which is a film that was first introduced in 1997 by Kodak, but only sold on selective markets, especially uh, in hot climates, so Latin America and Asia. And it was only recently released as a 35 millimeter film on the European market. And many people approached me and told me, okay, this is a film great for portraits. It's some say somewhere between Kodak Gold and Kodak Portra, and others said, okay, it's between Kodak Ekta and Kodak Portra. Um, regardless, um, it officially states on uh, the packaging that it is uh, a film with neutral skin tones that is well suited for portraits, weddings, and social events. So basically people photography. And as a portrait photographer, of course, I got interested and wanted to take a closer look at this film. And my trusted film lab, mindfilmlab.de, was kind enough to send me uh, a package for free, so five rolls that I could just test um, during a portrait session using my Canon EOS um, 30V and during um, a, a small photo walk on my own using my Leica M3. So without further ado, let's head over to my uh, to the couch and take a look at some of the images that I've taken with this particular film. So now let's first take a look at some of the portraits that I've shot with this particular film. And already here um, you can instantly see the strong green in the background and still that the skin tones were rendered pretty neutral. And with respect to the yellow I like that it was slightly desaturated um, um, in contrast to how it actually looked. Um, here you get another shot of that with the same behavior in terms of the colors. Um, really strong, beautiful greens in my opinion. Completely natural skin tones, really neutral. Nice brown hair. The only thing that you have is a slight color shift in her hair towards the bluish um, because of course she does not have gray hair or anything. Um, but here you have slight areas with a, a bluish tone. And then what I've noticed, um, especially shooting the beautiful Canon EOS 30V with an 85 millimeter lens, um, the amount of detail that you can record with this film, and here you can really see that if you look at her eyelashes and her brown eyes and her lips, you get a lot of details. It's a really sharp film and you can really see the Kodak quality that it, that it brings about. And for me, the packages, the packaging at first kind of looked a bit cheap and I was instantly thinking, okay, this is more like a, a coat of gold. But looking at the results, I realized, okay, this is a, a film that is more for prosumers, so to speak, and not a, a, just a, a consumer film. Um, here are some additional portraits. Um, uh, I'm primarily showing you this um, because of the shifting light situations and in all cases you get beautiful, nice um, skin tones. And here all that is important to mention here I think is on the right side you can see that in the shadowy area where we get a bluish tone in and also in parts of her eyes that are less illuminated on the right side you can also see this slight bluish tint and on the left side, uh, you get strong greens again, which are coming in this case from the, from the grass that is near us, the, that was near us, but still you can see it kind of glowing in her hair on the left side. Um, here I really, really love what the film did in terms of color. Um, this rich green, you can actually feel the, the wetness um, of the drops of water kind of on the, on the leaves. And then um, kind of the texture of um, the red pullover that she's wearing. Um, this is really, really nice. And I, I also, again, really appreciate the color of her skin, plus uh, how her eyes are rendered, this very beautiful brown. It's just, it's just beautiful and such a natural look and well suited for portraits, in my opinion, in this case. Um, uh, 
<laughs> just another shot from the same situation, um, a little bit different composition. Uh, again, you can see that and where the, the light was hitting her and where there was not a lot of light and even there in the shadowy areas we I managed to record quite some detail. In this case, I, I believe I shot the film at ISO 80. I experimented a little bit around with ISO 100 and ISO 80 because that was what my film lab recommended to me. And I think you can go for both, but um, um, as most color negative films, this film also appreciates getting a little bit of extra light, so it um, doesn't hurt to shoot it at ISO 80. Um, here I had a very interesting light situation, really shifting light situation, and I really like how this image turned out. And you can see the glow in her eyes and um, how beautifully illuminated her, her skin was. And again, the richness that you get in her skin tones and the glow of her face. And then in contrast, how um, the, the, the texture of her turtleneck is kind of... Um, a bit more muted and you really automatically focus on her face. I really like that and I like how the film rendered the colors here as well. Again, the rich greens in the background. This, is, this kept surprising me when I looked at the images. Of course, this also was in nature, but I really like how uh, the green comes out here. And then here in front of white or light gray background, um, completely different feel to it instantly. Um, also the, the turtleneck here is affected and still you get the natural um, skin tones. Really neutral, really beautiful. Um, again, I just like the image. Uh, it's just beautiful. The only thing that you see is that some of her, her, her hair is going towards grayish again which of course it, it's not in reality. Um, yeah, but that's it basically. And here you get um, a, a stronger bluish tint in this particular case. Um, and part of the reason is that we had the sun coming in. You can see that from the shadows on her turtleneck and um, on her face. Yeah. Um, overall, well suited for portraits, a great alternative to Kodak Portra. And what I particularly like is how it deals with green and um, also how it um, does not bring out the yellow tones as much as um, Kodak Gold um, would do it or even Kodak Acta do it, does it. Um, so you always get this really neutral look to it, a bit muted um, and certain colors like red and green really come out nicely. And, and even yellow came out nicely but as yellow and not as a yellowish tint, um, which I don't appreciate at all for portraits. So these are the portraits and then I just wanted to show you some of the street shots that I did um, with the Leica M3. Um, this is the Olympic um, Village. Um, just some shots. Um, beautiful, nice blue um, sky on that particular day just get natural colors in my opinion. Um, it's just a very nice natural color film look. Um, here you can see that particularly well. It just looks beautiful and premium and you get all the details recorded and you get beautiful sharpness. It's not, again, it's not a consumer film where you do make a lot of compromises and yet it's rather inexpensive and especially compared to what you get. Again, the amount of detail recorded here in this cardboard box and uh, the little kids' shoes, um, it's just wonderful in my opinion. Um, so once you get a have a great lens, uh, you can certainly enjoy the kind of detail this film records. And here I particularly like the colors again, um, the reds um, and how they were rendered the green, um, this film, this shot was a bit overexposed, I would suppose. And uh, yeah, and yet beautiful. Um, really nice red, really nice grayish tones, the browns of the box and, and all that on top. Really nice. And here's some nature shots. Um, and I will have a few more in, in a minute um, to show you again how different it renders the green tones. 
for, in, for instance, in comparison to Fuji Pro 400H that is famous for how it um, treats the, the greens and kind of uh, desaturates them and, and, and really brings out a certain greenish look that is great for wedding photography, as most of you will know. Um, but this here just feels different. Um, really nice, really beautiful. Yeah. Some more street shots, and this one was of course taken through a window. Yeah. Again, the sharpness, the details, amazing, really amazing, beautiful film. Here's a blue Bavarian sky. <laughs> Um, intersected which with something that you see a lot here in Munich, which is a construction crane. Um, because there are a lot of constructions going on in the city. And then you have this piece of tradition next to it. And here an image that I again really liked um, because of the greenish tone. And this very natural um, wooden box and the topography on it. Uh, just really nice. And as promised, a couple more nature shots and then I'm good to go. This was on the morning um, I took the portraits of Olga. I had a little bit of spare time walking around with the cannon in the park here and photographing some of the swans. And again, you can see the level of detail recorded in those feathers is amazing. You get the strong greens again, you get beautiful contrast. Um, strong, nice look. The only thing again, here is that sometimes if you have a lot of green in your image, um, it kind of overtakes other colors a little bit. You get a lot of green here in the background on the edges of the um, of the the black rocks, and you also get a greenish tint in the water that's here in the background. And here again, very nice the the kind of detail that you get. So. Overall, I'm incredibly pleased with this film here. Again, you can see the, the drops of water and strong greens, strong, accurate color um, rendering. Just wonderful. So overall, as you can hear, I can highly recommend this film. So thank you very much for watching and for joining me here in my living room for this very first video that I'm shooting here. Um, with respect to the film, what we've seen is it's incredibly sharp. It's very interesting how it renders greens and reds. And I really appreciate that it doesn't bring out the, the yellow tones as strongly as Kodak Gold or Kodak Ekta would do. Um, indeed, the skin tones are neutral. And, and overall, I can really say it's a great alternative to Kodak Portra, um, especially if you're um, low, if you're on a budget or if you just want to shoot occasional, um, let's say casual portraits or if you want to go out with it for street shots or um, some social event, it's a really solid film. You can definitely use it for that. And I'm just glad that it's finally available in Europe as well. So if you can get your hands on this film, you should definitely give it a try as well. And if you want to purchase it online, you can take a look here at mindfilmlab.de and purchase it in their store as well. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, please leave us a comment in the comment section below. And if you have any more questions or uh, so forth, uh, please just ask them. And um, if you enjoyed this video, please also consider subscribing to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate it. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.